The Lord be with you, dear friends and colleagues. I'm Brenna. And I'm Joseph. And we want to welcome you to the morning prayer portion of today's Presbytery meeting. By the church's reckoning, today is the 16th day of Lent. Just the 16th day of 40 days. We're not even halfway to Holy Week, but we already are exhausted by the planning and the preparing and the leading and the performing we've already done. And we know that come Easter, we might be limping into our pulpits trying to proclaim good news. The image of a desert is a fitting image for us pastors and church leaders here in the first third of our Lenten journey. Deserts are magnificent and beautiful spaces. If your experience of them is limited to a half-day field trip or a one-night camping trip. But stay longer than a few days, linger for six weeks, for 40 days, and suddenly the beauty of the desert becomes an insatiable quest for water and shade. As pastors and elders in church ministry, we know that there are seasons where we feel as if we have been relocated to what feels like the harsh climate of a desert. One minute, we're thriving and growing, loving our call. And the next, we're just trying to make sure we have enough food and water. And maybe that's you today. And if that's you, then this service is for you. Here, you'll hear the words of scripture and be invited to pray. Here you'll meditate on the words of some songs and psalms with the hope that you will leave this service a bit more rest refreshed. You may not be done wandering in the desert, but maybe you'll have a bit more water in your bottle. Maybe you'll have a bit more food in your pack. But maybe you don't feel like you're in a desert at all. Maybe life is good and your ministry and your call are thriving. This service is still for you because chances are you are serving people in the pews who are languishing and are in need of your care and your love. So we invite you to use this brief liturgy to offer your prayers to God on their behalf. No matter who you are and where you are today, you are invited to come with us into this desert to hear the word of the Lord and to be refreshed. Like St. Augustine's Confessions, today's service is almost entirely an extended prayer, and each element is designed to offer you an avenue to approach the Lord with your confessions, concerns, hopes, and fears. So come, friend, let us bless the name of the Lord together this morning. Lord, today we come to this desert. The ground around us feels dry. Our souls feel parched. Our ministries feel empty of any flourishing. Come, Lord. Come, you who wandered in the wilderness and fasted for 40 days. Come, who, while weary, faced temptations of ease and comfort. Come, you who battled evil, armed with only the scripture you memorized as a child. Come, Christ of the desert, you who suffer with us. Come, Jesus, and refresh our hearts. God of life, there are days when the burdens we carry are heavy on our shoulders and they weigh us down when the road 
seems dreary and endless. The skies, gray and threatening, when our lives have no music in them, and our hearts are lonely, and our souls have lost their courage. Flood the path with light. Turn our eyes to where the skies are full of promise. Tune our hearts to brave music. Give us the sense of companionship with heroes and saints of every age. And so quicken our spirits that we may be able to encourage the souls of all who journey with us on the road of life to your honor and glory. Amen. From the deserts and wildernesses of our lives come moments for meditation and introspection. In these moments of prayer, we turn an eye upward to God, but we also turn an eye inward to the condition of our own heart. In these moments, we are overcome by the holy otherness of God, and we are grieved by the sinful selfishness of our own selves. We already know all the words of assurance we say weekly to our congregations, but deep down, we wonder if any of it is true. Does God really still love us in spite of our sin? Does God really forgive us from what we have done and left undone? Can we really be in relationship to a God who is utterly unlike us in every way? Bearing these doubts and more, let us make our address to God using these personal, first-person singular words. Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others, and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are called. You are chosen. You are part of God's project of reconciliation in spite of the condition of your heart. Take it easy, easy. God already loves you completely. Take it easy. in the 
shade of his wings Lay down your burdens and rest for a while The shepherd who seeks you is gentle and kind There's nothing to pay for and nothing to earn Nothing you have to become Take it easy Easy God already loves you completely Take it easy Easy Rest in the shade of His wings scales where you weigh out your life the measures are empty just leave them behind the distance between his two hands are enough to tell you the depths of his love take it easy easy God already loves you A reading from Psalm 62 For God alone my soul in silence waits From Him comes my salvation God truly is my strength and my salvation God is my defense so that I shall not be greatly shaken For God alone my soul in silence waits For my hope is in Him God truly is my strength and my salvation. He is my defense, so that I shall not fall. In God is my help and my glory. He is the rock of my might, and in Him is my trust. O oh, put your trust in Him always, you people. Pour out your hearts before Him, for God is our hope. As for the children of mortals, they are but a breath. Upon the scales, they are altogether lighter than a breath. O oh, trust not in oppression, put not vain hopes in robbery. If riches increase, set not your hearts upon them. One thing has God spoken, indeed, two things have I heard him say. 
that power belongs to our God, and that you, O Lord, are merciful, for you reward everyone according to their work. A reading from Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh also longs after you in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Thus, I have looked upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall praise you. As long as I live, I will magnify you and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with rich foods when my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the watches of the night because you have been my helper Therefore, under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Again he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. We have heard your word, O Lord. In the desert places of our lives and ministries, we wait for you. We long for you. Here in the desert lands, we long for the day when we will be satisfied, when our spirits and souls and hearts will finally be at rest. We long for the day when the desert becomes a paradise and when everlasting joy shall be the garland on our brow. Hear, Lord, we hear your gospel call to keep sowing the seeds of your kingdom, no matter what the soil we walk may look like. Lord, fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with joy. Restore us by your word and send us out to do your work with gladness. Amen.
Lord, we come to you today in prayer, not because we are strong or capable, neither because we are filled with joy or imagination. We come to you because we are weary. Our hearts are parched. Our strength has faded. Yet even while weeping, we keep on sowing the seeds of your kingdom, trusting that our labor is not done in vain, and that one day we might see how our work is one small part of all that you are doing to heal and restore this world. But today, we are still in the desert, sowing seeds even here where the soil is barely visible. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring to you our prayers and intercessions for others. God the Father, your will for all people is health, shalom, and salvation. We praise and thank you, O God. God the Son, you came that we might have life and have it abundantly. We praise and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you stir up within this world a peace we cannot comprehend, and you free us to live in that peace together. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or wounded, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. For our enemies and for those who long us to falter, we pray for restored relationships and peaceable interactions and that we may learn how to serve and love them in peace. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless all those who minister to the suffering, the sick, and the dying, and grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. To the dying, grant peace and a holy death, and uphold the grieving by your holy grace and consolation. Hear us, O Lord of life. Indeed, Lord, restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our churches, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. Amen. Let this affirmation be our ringing cry. It will give us the courage to face the uncertainties of the future. It will give our tired feet New strength as we continue our forward stride toward the city of freedom. When our days become dreary with low hovering clouds of despair. When our nights become darker than a thousand midnights. Let us remember that there is a creative force in this universe working to pull down the gigantic mountains of evil power that is able to make a way out of no way and transform dark yesterdays into bright tomorrows. Let us realize that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Let us realize that William Cullen Bryant is right. 
truth crushed to earth will rise again. Let us go out realizing that the Bible is right. Be not deceived. God is not mine. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is our hope for the future. With this faith, we will be able to sing in some not too distant tomorrow with a cosmic past tense. We have overcome, we have overcome deep in my heart. I did believe we would overcome. Go in peace from this desert to love and to serve the Lord. Go in peace to work for the healing of the world. Go in peace to live in communion with God and with one another. Amen. <laughs>